Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, a ridiculously cool utility knife from G&G Hawk, yet another Bowie joins the stable, and emotional support knives. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comment from this past week was from Jose Abdul Favela. And just on a personal note, Jose, I sent some stickers out to you. Uh, up there, uh, up north, and they were returned to me. I need your uh, unit number, and I'll send them back to you. They got all the way to your building, and someone put unit number question mark, and so they came back to me. Anyway, uh, Jose Abdul Favela on the Midweek Supplemental last week said, just starting this video, love that shirt. I had the Knifeaholic t-shirt on. He said, this month I spent $3,000 Canadian on knives. Lynn Thompson Leatherneck 10.5 clip point arriving soon. By the way, that's one I'm really interested in. Uh, from Knife Center. Knifeaholic for real. Keeping all boxes must have factory edge. At least I can always sell, trade, etc. in the future. Okay, so this does sound uh, a lot, uh, Jose, you do sound a lot like a knife junkie uh, because you have, uh, you're building up a, a wall of justification around your purchases. I know, I do it myself. Oh, I'm keeping the boxes and the factory edge and I can always sell them or trade them for food after the apocalypse. Uh, so I hear where you're coming from. Just just be careful. That slippery slope is a real thing. Um, oh my gosh. And who am I to lecture you? Lynn Thompson, Leatherneck, 10.5 clip point. Now that I have uh, the knife I'll be showing off in the state of the collection uh, from Cold Steel, now I have to move on to this Lynn Thompson. So Jose, you've opened up a can of worms for me too. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, you know, knifeaholicism is real. So just be careful. All right. Thanks for the comments. Uh, keep them coming one and all. Uh, I, I do enjoy them. All right. I think it's time for a pocket check. Uh, today, I had an interesting carry on me, a little bit different, uh, reflecting fall, if you will. I had on me the asymmetrical contact. I am in love with this knife, this Warncliffe um, frame lock folder, titanium frame lock folder. This is uh, has one method of opening, just like an old school knife, and I love it. Uh, that is thumb studs on incredible action. This thing is buttery, buttery smooth on bearings. It uh, has all this beautiful micro milling around uh, on the edge chamfers there, and uh, the bronze anodization and the sculpted pocket clip, the perfect Warncliffe blade. This thing is perfect because it really does live up to the what the Warncliffe is for. It's a great utility blade, but it also has that nice forward angle, um, which makes it a good tactical uh, option. Also, which you know, I like. That's just my my taste. Uh, so this covers a lot of bases for me. It is practical and it is tactical, and it's a three point one five or it's three point three four inch blade which is just south of my preferred 3.5 to four inch. Uh, but, but it is, I find that with Warncliffe's like this and the Yojimbo and, and some other uh, knives actually by Dirk Pinkerton, uh, I can go low. I can go to 3.125 in my front right pocket and feel confident that I have enough knife to take me through the day. Uh, this is S35VN. Asymmetrical is the mid-tier line from uh, Beyond EDC, a new brand. Uh, out of the United States with uh, manufacturing in China. David Sun was a guest on the show. David Sun, the proprietor, great guy. I met him at Blade Show. We had an awesome conversation. I love what he's doing. Uh, he, by the way, is the one, um, or Beyond EDC, is the company that makes the River Wolf by John Demko. That's in their Terra Nova line. Terra Nova line, that's their top tier sort of uh collaboration line. Okay. Uh, what else did I have on me today? I had for emotional support, which is going to be the topic of the day. Uh, I had the, um, Victor from petrified fish. I really like this knife. It was on the chalking block, 
<clears throat> pardon me, it was on the chopping block for a short period of time, uh, only because uh, I had a whole bunch of knives in this tier on the chopping block, and uh, they have all come off. <laughs> shockingly uh because i feel sometimes i need them around for comparison knives i need them as cast members you know for the show so to speak uh but this one i don't think i'll ever get rid of because of that blade that that beautiful bowie blade i mean to me this is uh a design a bowie design a bowie profile that you could put next to a, a 110 or a cold steel recon one or uh, there are a few really, really emblematic, uh, iconic Bowie designs out there. Uh, the the Hinderer uh, folding Bowie, I think, is amazing. I think that this deserves to sit on the shelves with those just in terms of profile. It, it is a beautiful and perfect Bowie, so I've, I will be keeping this. Uh, but it also is wearing these, uh, these, these blue jeans uh, that I just love so much, these... Uh, uh, micarta scales that have been actually picking up the funk pretty well and and bluing up nicely i you can see when you look around the pocket clip how much patina there is on these handles i i love the color of this blue denim micarta i frequently compare it to the jeans you might see at a mall walking around and uh i don't know i don't know like it a lot but emotional support we'll talk about why this knife garners emotional support this is actually on a number of levels to me the look uh and utility of that bowie blade but also uh the the feel of the action has so much to do with it and we'll be talking about that a little bit downstream also on me today uh you know ben belkin has really gotten me back into my slip joint phase over the past six months i understand i got one incoming i cannot wait to see that it should probably be here tomorrow as i record this uh, but today in my pocket I went old school. I went back several months uh, to the little bro. Uh, this is the boy's knife made by Jack Wolf Knives, designed by Ben Belkin. It's uh, his modern interpretation of the classic boy's knife. Uh, that's the sleeve board pattern here. It looks like the sleeve board on an ironing board. And, um, and then you've got that gorgeous clip point blade with the downward reaching edge and the slight recurve that you end up sharpening out through time. Look at that sharpening notch, speaking of which, that is a fully hollow ground blade, hollow ground all the way up to the spine and uh, very, very thin behind the edge. And with that sharpening notch, that large triangular sharpening notch, you get a lot of life out of that edge. You can keep sharpening upward towards the apex of that sharpening notch and still have a thin enough edge to have a very slicey, cutty uh, blade. So uh, love Ben Belkin's take on these on these uh, traditional knives. And the boy's knife, uh, thanks to GEC, has been one of my favorites for a long time. Uh, it's the perfect size, and I do love the clip point blade. Speaking of clip points, last on me today, as I said, uh, reflecting fall, I'm going back to uh, more fixed blade carry. And this is actually one that I can't really pull off in the summer. I mean, I do in my uh, shorts and stuff just around the house, but going out and about, it's a little bit too much. Uh, and that is the Street Bowie by Spyderco and Fred Perrin. Uh, pardon me, Fred Perrin, uh, former French commando, current French badass designed this knife. I have a number of Fred Perrin design knives um, and uh, just love them. Here's one that I got at Blade Show this year, incidentally, the uh, the little Bowie neck knife, but uh, signature to his design style. By the way, a lot of people dish on this uh, this sheath. I actually like it. Keeps it's a uh, it's got decent hold, but not too much. You can tug it out, and if you're wearing say loose shorts, this is nice and light. You can wear this with loose shorts. When you tug it out, it doesn't pull your shorts up uh, and give you a wedgie. You know, it's just. It's, it's got perfect retention. Yeah, it rattles around a little bit, but I'm not out doing night ops. I don't have to worry about it, right? And uh, so I, I really do like the sheath. Pancake sheaths tend to have a little bit large of a uh, footprint to me. But anyway, uh, that being said, the knife is so great. I love this thing. This is five inches of VG10. Um, doesn't come razor sharp, but I, I have gotten it so. 
there's a uh, hard plastic handle, but you've got these little rubberized inserts there. And when you look downward on it, you'll see that it's got a Coke bottle contour um, in three dimensions. So it just fits the hand perfectly and beautifully. And this sharpening notch, or not sharpening notch, I'm sorry, this finger choil here is iconic. I shouldn't say iconic. That word is overused. That finger choil uh, is something you'll see in Fred Perrin's designs. That is in lieu of a blade guard, of a guard the, to stop your hand from sliding up onto the blade in a thrust. That deep finger choil uh, allows the blade to become the guard in a very French fashion, by the way. A lot of their old fighting knives look like chef's knives where the blade is wider than the handle at the Ricasso and that acts as the guard. So you see that French tradition coming out in Fred Perrin's designs. And yet he loves the Bowie, which is very definitely an American design. So I like, I love his designs. I love the crossovers and such. He's got the subway Bowie. Is that what it's called? The subway boy, which, yeah, by the way, if you're caught on the subway with that little tiny knife, uh, they'll throw the book at you and you'll end up in Rikers. <clears throat> or actually, these days, probably not. <laughs> probably not. They'll let you drive the train, probably. Uh, so Fred Perrin, Street street Bowie. This is a great utility knife, too, by the way. It reminds me a bit of the uh, of a small version of the Trailmaster, just a full flat ground Bowie, uh, very long, straight, slender kind of fighting Bowie shape with a nice swedge. Um, just a great carry. So this is what I had on me today. I had the asymmetrical contact. I had the petrified fish Victor, the little bro by uh, Jack Wolf Knives. And I had the, the Perrin designed street Bowie by Spiderco. What were you carrying today? Let me know. Drop it in the comments below. I always love finding out what you guys carry. It gives me ideas about what I should do. Uh, be looking for, be on the lookout for, because you all have such good taste. Uh, if you like what we do, please join us on Patreon. Uh, you can check it out by going to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon or scanning the QR code. Uh, we have a couple of new patrons uh, that have just come in. We will announce them on Thursday night and then put them on next week's show in a nice big graphic. I do appreciate uh, all the support of the show, as does Jim. Uh, it helped me buy this awesome table that doesn't shake when I make just uh, gesticulations or pound the pound the desk. So uh, it's greatly appreciated one and all join us by going to the knife junkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's the knife junkie.com slash Patreon. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife and we've got you covered for the latest weekly knife deals. Be sure to visit the knife junkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Those uh, knives in that liner, the auxiliary manufacturing, those Japanese looking chef's knives. I think I talked to that guy at Blade Show. Those things are fantastic looking. Uh, definitely uh, interested in that. Go uh, use that link. Always awesome stuff from uh, knives, ship for, uh, knives Ship Free. Uh, okay, so first up, speaking of awesome and ridiculously cool, G&G &G Hawk, Grant and Gavin Hawk, father and son team. They seem to be insane geniuses. Uh, they work out of sort of a barn. Obviously, it's not it's not a barn. It's a very high-tech shop inside of a barn. But they are doing amazingly interesting things, always have. Uh, they have um, their designs have been made by Chris Reeve Knives. Their designs have been made by CRKT and many, many others. And they release things under their own um, under their own shingle, like this. This is a utility knife, and it uses, uh, it's a one-handed folding utility knife. You can see a thumb stud right above that pivot, and it uses something very similar to the lock that they used on the um, tie lock on uh, from Chris Reeve Knives. This thing is, I mean, if you look at it, I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. It looks like a piece of steampunk kit here. It's got a cantilevered uh, sort of bar on top. And 
uh, okay, well, you're, you're going to have to look it up to, to see what it looks like. You can flip it open and all this, but I, I want to read to you the, some of the, um, some of the thoughts behind this uh, from the Hawks uh, because of, uh, let's see, even with light use, the blade will need to be uh, resharpened, but resharpening can be problematic. He's talking about just regular knives and why they're coming out with this $450 utility knife. And uh, he continues, because of this, people tend to be careful with how they use their knives. Utility knives, by contrast, aren't maintained, so they must be completely renewed every couple of weeks. When you do replace the blade, it's like having a brand new knife. Uh, if you look at the blade, it's not an ordinary blade that you're going to be replacing. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is not exactly like the kind of utility knife you're going to be picking up at Home Depot, that's for sure. But I, I have never, ever been excited about a utility knife but look at if you i mean i'm sorry i'm a, i'm a little speechless uh, at at how cool this thing is because uh, i remember when todd rexford came out with his utility knife and uh, the ruk and many others came out with theirs and and they cost a lot of money i'm just like this is just a a, a blade holder out of titanium with a slightly clever design how can you justify that kind of money but when you look at the engineering that goes into a G&G Hawk knife. And you look at this knife in particular that's on screen. Yeah, it's out of titanium and look at how it closes. <laughs> it closes as quickly as it opens. I don't know. Uh, to me, here's a utility knife that's worth the insane, you know, cost. And $450 isn't, isn't an insane cost for a knife in the kind of uh, collecting a lot of us tend to do, but for a utility knife, it kind of is. But look at that thing. Uh, okay, well, you'll have to forgive me if you're only listening to this podcast because uh, words defy, as they often do with Grant and Gavin Hawk. By the way, if you think they're interesting, uh, you should check out the interview we did with them. I would like to do another one now that we do now that we do video. We've been doing video for years, but I did talk to Grant and Gavin Hawk before we did video, and. Uh, I could see what was going on. I could see their shop, but no one else could. So pretty interesting stuff. All right, next up, uh, zero tolerance. It's not really news, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. They're re-releasing a Sinkovich classic. I do love uh, Sinkovich designs. I'm especially fond of the 0640, or, um, 0450 uh, line. This is the 0460. I had that and featured that on the channel quite a while back and ended up selling it for something else. Um, it has a very nice and light feel. Actually, maybe a little too light. That was something that turned me off a little bit about this knife. Uh, but they're re-releasing it in the dark wash with the with the red and black checkered carbon fiber. Now, this is kind of uh, uh, on trend for zero tolerance. They don't seem to be doing much new. They're just sort of rehashing older designs. And uh, that's fine. Maybe, um, I don't know. I don't know what's up with zero tolerance, but I miss them. I miss you, zero tolerance. What happened to you? You were beautiful. Uh, but this is a very nice looking knife. It's cool to see them bring it back. Uh, maybe they shouldn't, maybe what they should just do is stick with the good models they have and not discontinue them and just continue to, the, to make them. And maybe they would if they were selling. I don't know what's going on with them, like I just said. So maybe I'll just leave it there. If you're interested in the 046, uh, in the 0640, uh, definitely check it out. Wait, no, 0460. My bad. Definitely check it out because you can get it in this nice looking, uh, black wash uh setup with the red carbon fiber okay still to come on the knife junkie podcast we're going to take a look at an awesome new uh, bowie for me and something on loan from hero sticks and then we're going to talk emotional support knives the Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit thenifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. 
it's no secret I'm in a Bowie phase. Uh, I think I'm I'm very public when I go into a phase like my dagger phase, uh, recent dagger phase, but this is a Bowie phase because I feel like the more public I am, the more justified I am in collecting more of them because, well, I told you all I'm into it. Uh, so here's one that's been, uh, um, it's been on the docket for a long time. And I just, since I just discovered Chicago Knife Works and they have excellent prices on fixed blade knives, um, I decided to get this one. I've been a good boy at work and I decided, uh, to lay down the the relatively low amount of money for what you're getting out of this thing. Look at this. First of all, the 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 sheath is a hard leather sheath with this uh it, it's got a um a leather frog that slips on it and then it's got a chape, a metal chape down at the bottom so that if you're riding your horse, you know, into combat and you fall off the, uh, the blade, which is very acute at the tip, doesn't poke through the sheath and stab you in the leg or just destroy the, uh, the sheath. So it's got this big metal shape that's uh, blued, which I love the look of. Um, actually, in pictures, I thought it looked kind of corny, um, a little too sword-like. But then again, Bowie knife fighting is based on saber fighting. Um, so there you go. Look at the look at the uh, swing guard, or not the swing guard, the swing, the dangler is very stout on this sheath. That's what I'm getting at. This is made by Windless Cutlery in, uh, or Windless Bladecraft, I think they're called, from India. They are known for their historic reproductions, uh, accurate historical reproductions that are quote unquote battle ready, uh, whatever that means. You know, We haven't had one of those kind of battles in a long time, but they're stout and sturdy and sharp. And uh, this Bowie is certainly no exception to that. This is my first windless made knife, as far as I know, uh, and I really love it. Look at the shape of this Bowie. It's got a slightly upward curving blade, but it is it is relatively thin. Comparing this to, say, the Shining Mountain Bowie, which has a big fat belly and uh, reaches its widest point just above the apex of the clip, this sort of does, uh, well, it doesn't do the opposite, but it maintains a sort of parallel line, swells ever so slightly below the apex of the clip, and then goes towards this insane tip, that insanely acute tip. Uh, it is a stout tip, though, when you turn it on its side and look down uh, on the spine of the knife, it maintains, what is this, maybe three sixteenths of an inch. Sorry, I didn't measure. I don't think it's quite a quarter inch. Uh, but it maintains that thickness just about to the tip. Um, so you you have a very acute tip, but it's also really stout. I mean, um, I have seen people abuse this knife. I have not had a chance to take it outside yet. It's pretty new to me. Uh, and we have a bunch of rain. We've had a bunch of rain this past week. And uh, I was planning on taking it out and kind of, I don't want to say beating on it, but using it uh, somewhat hard um, while like, getting wood ready for the family fire pit because it is a full tang knife uh, much like uh, say the um, trail master which is the my usual knife for doing um, for making kindling and for batoning and stuff like that uh, not that i want to baton this knife necessarily but it's got this full tang unlike say the laredo bowie which is definitely just a fighting knife uh, it's got a cable tang which absorbs shock and no doubt is strong and soldered uh, tough in there, but I don't know, just having a cable tang to me does not say wood processing knife, whereas something like this, which has a full tang here, you can see some machine chatter right here. So not, not the most refined construction, but not bad. Um, but you can see the full tang on the bottom part. And then on the top, it's saddled over kind of like a, uh, the, like, kind of like a reverse, um, Randall knife. Randall knives have a channel full tang as well. A uh, big S guard. I love the big S guard with the with this portion coming down over the four fingers. It just looks kind of like a pirate knife. It's 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 a kind of a romantic uh, uh, style Bowie in that it's sweeping and dramatic and uh, but definitely useful and has a nice balance. You can you can really move the thing around and get the point where you want it to be with relative ease. So that has to do with the balance because the knife is, you know, it's about a pound, I think. 
you know, I haven't, I haven't weighed it, but I think it's about a pound. And so that can be a lot moving it around, but, uh, you know, this one is balanced nicely and that wooden blocky wooden handle, uh, I thought would be uncomfortable. It is not. So this is an excellent package and you can get something, well, you can get this from, from, uh, Chicago cutlery or Chicago. I'm sorry. I, I keep saying that it's not Chicago cutlery. It's Chicago knife works. Look them up. Chicago Cutlery is a maker of like chef's knives. And that's not who I mean. I mean, Chicago Knife Works. And they sell knives and they're great. They have great prices. And this was just north of a hundred bucks. So if you like big bowies and you want something that's going to, you know, you'll it'll last, you can pass it down. Um, check that thing out. It is, uh, it is worth it. And check out Chicago Knife Works. This is uh, totally unsponsored. It's just something I discovered through um, Legion Tactical. That's where he got uh, his Kudaman Bowie, and that's where I got mine. And I, I, I tend to keep going back there when I, when I log on. All right, so next up is another cool fixed blade. This one is from CRKT, and this is on loan from Hero Sticks. It's called the Catch-All. And the name sort of uh, belies its purpose. It's a, it's a do-everything camp knife. First of all, it comes in a very nice uh, um, Kydex-style sheath. And it has really good retention. It's a little loose, but again, this is the kind of knife uh, that you're going to be banging around camp with. And actually, when this is locked, it doesn't rattle as much. But it's not uh, something you're going to be sneaking up on sentries with, so you don't have to worry too much about the rattle. Uh, it is in there, so it's not going to fall out. It is locked in there. It's just a little loose down by the tip of the blade. Uh, we have a rubberized handle with... Uh, with finger choils that is so incredibly comfortable. This feels almost like a big version of the CRKT Minimalist. You know how comfortable the, minimal, the Minimalist is in hand. This, this rivals that. This is like the big brother. You've got that big hump on the top of the handle that, that really fills out the palm and also fills out the space between your palm and your thumb really nicely. So if you have it in a sort of saber grip like this, uh, you, you get a lot of power in that, in that curve down uh, from the blade there. Really excellent uh, ramp for the thumb. Pretty sharp jimping. This is a Comer uh, design. Uh, so that's a knife designer who does a number of designs uh, that... Uh, outdoor use designs that CRKT makes. Actually, this feels really good in reverse grip, not that you would ever really use this in reverse grip, but it does feel nice. Uh, so we look at that blade, what is it? It's a big sheep's foot blade, hollow ground. That's eight CR13 MOV, uh, which let's face it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's old and cold and you know, CRKT is sitting on five trillion tons of it. So they keep using it, but at the same time, let's also face, it is a serviceable steel. The problem is, uh, I don't know how much this knife costs, so I'm not going to um, comment on that here, but you, it seems like you limit yourself as a knife company with what you can charge when you use 8CR13 MOV. Uh, but we have also seen um, it used for a long time. People know how to heat treat it and get the most out of it. And by people, I mean knife companies. Um, I mean, even Cold Steel has used it uh, in recent days, and they have done a great job with the heat treating of 8CR. So it is a serviceable steel. It's just, uh, you know, I'm sure most people just feel like, we want to move on, man. Uh, very nice uh, sharpening choil here. You're going to get a couple of uh, pretty excellent sharpenings out of that because the plunge grind sits a little bit further back. Uh, again, thin behind the edge because of that hollow grind. Uh, this to me looks like a camp knife, uh, master, or, or what, what, jack of all trades, master of none. Great for um, food prep. Great for uh, I don't know. Might be good for skinning game. Might be a little large though, right? I'm sure most of you who have skinned game are looking at this and talking to your screen. That's a five and a half inch blade. That that might be too much, but. Anyway, it's something I never would have had a chance to check out if Hero Sticks didn't send it to me. So I'm grateful for that. And also, I think it's got a really cool shape, especially when I look at it uh, from this aspect. So that is the CRKT catch-all. 
It is a uh, from custom knife designer. Um, first name, I can't remember. Last name, Comer. And uh, it is from on offer from CRKT, and it's uh, a newish, newish knife. So check that out. Okay, so you've heard it before on this show many times. Emotional support. Emotional support knife. Okay, so we have all flown on uh, on on airplanes where someone has a little dog that they have hidden away in a little a little case and it yaps and and they embarrassingly talk to it and try and get it to 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 stop talking but or to stop yapping. But of course it's on an airplane and it doesn't understand what's happening with its ears and it doesn't understand the sensations it's going through and it's like why are we here and I think I smell food and all this. And that's giving the stressed out owner emotional support. Uh, which I don't understand, actually. So uh, this is something I have observed. Emotional support animals tend to make uh, the owners more stressed out because they're worried that the people around them are going to be judging them and going to be angry because they can't control the whimpers coming out of their dogs. You don't have to worry about this with an emotional support knife. Emotional support knife is a knife you take along during your day that you're not expecting to necessarily use. You've got your front pocket knife. Maybe you've got your in the waistband, uh, you know, self-protection knife. But that third knife, that ESK, that emotional support knife is important because it represents all the things about knife uh, collecting and knives in general that aren't represented in the other knives in your pocket. But you get to have them there with you as well so that when you're sitting working and you need to break through, uh, say, a block of some sort, you can pull that thing out and fidget with it and it can get the juices flowing. Okay, so emotional support knives are, this is not by definition, but this is how it is working out in, in my book. Need to have something unique about them, and they need to be fidgety. They do need to be fidgety. That is a big part of it. But fidgety can range. That does not just mean drop shut. That does not just mean uh, the latest mechanism. You can actually have, and we will show this, a fidgety lockback. We'll get to that. But first, let's uh, let's show my first and most recent and most usable, I shouldn't say usable, the most carried in my front right pocket emotional support knife. Most of these knives are not carried in my front right pocket. All right, so this right here is the Kaiser Big Lighter XL, and this is the button lock version. It's a four inch blade, just a beautiful drop point blade. You're not gonna hear me say that too many times, but just an absolutely beautiful and so usable drop point blade. That's 154 CM and fully, almost fully flat ground, very sharp and thin behind the edge. But the emotional support aspect is this. You just press the button, that button lock, and the blade very, um, obediently returns to its cage <laughs> you know this thing reminds me of a monster that you have under your control because it is a big blade four inch that's a full four inch blade it's extremely capable and uh, you never hear anyone talk about this but this would make a very good uh, self-protection knife if need be because you have the severe grip the serious gription of the of the linen micarta, which has all those little micro pockets to grab onto your hand. And of course, when it gets wet, it's even grippier, but you have that long, thin, sharp blade with the swedge. It would be, it would, this would make a great fighting knife if you had to, right? Right. So it's like that monster that returns to its cage on command. And uh, something about that gives me uh, the emotional support I need to get through the day. But really, it is this it's the fidget factor. I guess I could have called this fidget knives, but there is more to it than just fidget because these are not all little small uh, shrinking violets. So that's first up. Next up is one that was uh, sent to me by Vostied. And from the moment I received it, it was true love. It's the uh, Bellamy, funny name, uh, but the Bellamy, this is a carbon fiber and M390 uh, knife. Now this is, 3.4 inches, so it's just south of my wheelhouse, so to speak. But uh, so you'll you'll rarely see this in my front right pocket, but you will frequently see this in my pajama pocket or in my uh, workout pocket and my workout shorts pocket because it's so light, 
but so extremely capable. And it's got three ways of deploying. It's got the uh, the front flipper, which to me is the least good. It's got the fuller, which I love, and then it's got the regular flipper. So if you're trying to get through a writer's block on some stupid script about something you don't care about, and you got to make it sound splashy like you do care about it, you can take this out and absentmindedly flip it in all three ways, drive everyone around you crazy. But something about the tension it puts in the air really is good for creativity. So uh, this Bellamy, this Bellamy really does the trick for emotional support. It also has a very pleasing um, uh, uh, hollow grind that you can feel with your fingers, which I like to do with hollow grinds. I like to pinch hollow grinds and kind of feel how thin they are. And yet it's black wash, so you don't have to worry about the fingerprints uh, that are inevitable in other uh, knives of this ilk. So a lot gets covered with this knife for emotional support. It, you know, emotional support knives also cater to your neuroses. Uh, we're all prone to negative emotion from time to time. Like, oh my God, I just wish this thing wasn't such a fingerprint magnet. You know, like that kind of negative emotion. Well, this uh, assuages that too. So just a great, great emotional support knife in this Bellamy by Vosteed. Next up, probably the very first emotional support knife ever. Um, and I've heard this described, an old Kempo Karate teacher who was absolutely beautiful and reminded, reminded me of a James Bond femme fatale. But anyway, she called this next knife the pacifier for martial artists. Uh, and that is the Bally Song. Okay, so I have a funny story about this very ballet song. Uh, this weekend, I was uh, doing something with my daughter, uh, Olympia, my younger daughter. We're in, in this room, the knife room, we we're doing some painting, and I had to open up a package. And so uh, I pulled this knife out, and I flipped it open. I opened the package. She was like, whoa. I guess she's never seen me do that before. She's like, whoa, what was that? And I was like, it's a ballet song. You know, your mother can do this too. And I started flipping it to close it. And on the second flip she had ever seen, it dropped out of my hands and landed on the floor. And she just looked at me and she said, oh, I haven't mastered it yet. And she went about her business and nothing I could do could get her interested in the knife. I picked it back up and did a bunch of cool flipping. She was like, nope, you had your chance. Anyway, the butterfly knife used to have a huge role in our household before we had kids. My wife and I always had one on our table, uh, our our or um, what do you call it, the TV table, you know, when we were in our apartment in New York, and we, we've we always had ballet songs kind of around as utility, uh, utility knives. And and there is something cool about seeing my wife, you know, uh, absent-minded, not absent-mindedly, uh, without, without much thought, pulling it out and, and uh, whipping it open and using it for whatever and then closing it back up. Uh, when we had kids, we kind of stopped leaving them around uh, so much, but the love has not faded. And so when Kershaw came out with the Lucha, a, um, a ballet song with the proper dimensions, that is a uh, 4.125 inch, roughly 4.3 inch blade uh, with titanium handles, I jumped all over it, especially considering it's not the extravagant cost of other um, ballet songs, uh, other good ballet songs, I should say. Um, so this one is, what is it, 154, I believe. It's made in the U.S. and just an awesome knife. I really recommend this. And they just came out with a drop point version, leaf-shaped bladed version of this. But I do like this uh, clip point. This came out in, I think, 2019. In 2019, they were doing these weird swedges on their clip points. And I really like them. So the original emotional support knife, uh, the Bally Song is number three on this list. Number four, and these are in no particular order, of course. Uh, number four is the AD-15, uh, in this case by Cold Steel, and probably in most cases from Cold Steel. Uh, this is the Cold Steel version of the classic uh, Scorpion Locked custom knife by the Demco brothers, by uh, Andrew Demko and John. And Cold Steel, by all indications, including the, the Demcos, did an amazing job at translating this, this very expensive and exclusive custom knife into something that everyone can have. And 
in doing so, they've put this incredibly fidgety and fun lock in a lot more hands. And you know, you know this. It's a backstrap lock. This uh, scorpion lock. Now, this uh, interface is a little different than on the customs. On the customs, uh, this this is a hinge here. Here on the cold steel, this is all one piece, and it it hinges there. It doesn't break there. You lift that up, it pulls that pin out of the notch in the back of the tang, and the whole thing swings shut. I have heard uh, one person did mention a long time ago, uh, Johnny, I can't remember his last name, but he was a cool dude who was making videos for a while. He was talking about uh, having this portion exposed and how if you drop it and you get it nicked up, it will make a terrible gravelly sound when you open it. And I thought that was an interesting observation. Uh, maybe maybe that hardened steel won't won't dent up so easily, but who knows? Uh, just an interesting thought. So why is this an emotional support knife? Yes, it is fidgety, but also if by chance, uh, you know, the apocalypse happens on your way to work and this is in your pocket, you're well covered. This is an incredibly stout and sturdy knife. And the strength of that lock, which is very, very strong, is only added to by your own strong uh, manly or womanly grip on this thing. It really keeps it closed uh, and, and just compounds the lock. Of course, you have a really nicely shaped drop point with the swedge, so you can get some good penetration with this if need be. Uh, but it has a, a high height. That's about a two-thirds high uh, saber grind, flat grind. So it is fun and fidgety, but uh, will see you through the toughest of times if they happen while this is in your pocket. So uh, 8015 is definitely an awesome emotional support knife. Uh, one minus to this being an emotional support knife <clears throat> and possibly uh, the this big one and actually the Lucha so far, uh, a lot of emotional support knives are, are smaller than the ones I've shown so far. So if this is not your main knife and this is in your back left pocket, you're going to notice it. So uh, emotional support knives can be main main carry, uh, but generally they aren't. Okay, next is the Finch Buffalo Tooth. This is relatively new to my collection, and I don't know. The emotional support that comes from this uh, cannot be fully explained because some of it comes from gazing at that beautiful Coca-Bolo wood. I am just becoming a sucker for nice wood on blades, on knives. And uh, the mix of old and new, modern, uh, or I should say contemporary and traditional in these Finch knives just really touches something off in me. But this one does it more than any other. So far, this has been my favorite Finch knife. And uh, that's saying a lot because uh, every new knife from them that comes out, I think is really, really great. And every Finch that I have, I love. But this takes the cake. Okay, so why is this a good emotional support knife? First of all, you get great uh, flipping action out of it. It's fun to open and close repeatedly. Something about the width of the blade and the width of the handle also is very comfortable, makes it feel good in hand to open and close. Like this closing part feels um, uniquely good. But also, uh, the materials, the titanium, that is titanium, which they don't always use. The titanium next to the wood is very pleasing to me. And then the capability of that 154 cm blade is outstanding. I tell the story oftentimes with this knife. I prepared a whole salad with this the day I got it, and it was so good at cutting vegetables. And I know that is not the use, the main use for this knife. To me, and I I don't know what everyone else thinks. To me, this is ultimately a gent's knife. It is a gentleman's knife. Um, it's light enough that it can be carried in, say, a suit pocket. Uh, the one thing is the footprint is pretty broad, but if you can get over that, I think this is, um, you know, place it on a desk next to a Mont Blanc and a nice uh, uh, leather wallet and a, and a cool watch, and it just kind of fits that role. It, uh, so emotional support uh, from many angles, uh, whether it's fidget, uh, whether it's nostalgia, which is, uh, what did it say? Nostalgia is, uh, memories and plus a couple of drinks. Um, and, 
Oh yeah. And, and, and the capability. So, you know, I mean, like a, a, a good emotional support knife has to be very capable too. Next up is the nettle from Arcona. The Arcona nettle got this from Levon. This was actually a gift from Levon of the Knife Nuts podcast and his business um, from Russia with Levon. So he imports all of these really cool knives, a lot of them designed by Ivan Bragnets. And this is one of them, uh, made by a company, Arcona. And uh, again, this is the nettle. Why is this an emotional support knife? Well, you have a 3.7-inch uh, blade, so you got a nice, uh, long, you got a good size blade, beautiful swedge, nice to look at, thin behind the edge with a full flat or with a nearly full height uh, flat grind. You've got amazing life on this knife. Look at that sharpening toil, and it remains pretty thin all the way to the the top of that. Uh, Toil, so you could sharpen this and resharpen this and resharpen this. This is K110, which is sort of like European D2. And then you've got this really cool denim micarta with uh, black mixed in there, blue and black micarta, and a great swappable. Um, uh, more people need to do this with the pocket clips. So you don't have these unsightly holes on the side, you just clip it to the top. I mean, SOG discovered that years ago. I like the big hardware. It's cool. Um, uh, I think that you take that off and then you've got nested liners under there. But you've got great fidget factor with that um, front flipper, probably my favorite and most usable front flipper, and then just absolute drop shut action. So again, you've got size and capability and uh, very good grip, by the way, with the channels that are carved into this uh, the side of this micarta. You've got the size and the utility, and then you have the absolute joy of opening and closing it. So you get the, the fidget and the use, like you do out of this next one. This is the 80 20.5. So you get that awesome shark lock. Another, this is the one of three Demco designs in this lineup, which was not planned. But hey, I love, I love the man's designs. So they're going to, they're going to give me emotional support, right? This one is, got to say, I say it every time, that shark foot, that's an ugly duckling. It's a face only a mother could love, um, or a father in this case. And, you know, I've grown to love it. A uh, very useful blade shape, uh, except if you want to stab something. Um, but on the whole, we don't have to do that much. And if you need to get into a clamshell or something like that, clamshell packaging that requires a uh, <clears throat> puncture that will do the trick this is uh the uh aus 10a this is the very first run that they came out with um i have put a lanyard on there i had i carried this around uh this was one of my edcs on my 50th birthday uh, a couple of years ago big party and this came out all the time because the other knife i was carrying was was just too big i didn't want to freak anyone out um so this came out a lot. This got used to carve a whole bunch of dry tiki torch bamboo, which is more uh, more of a pain in the butt than it sounds like, and did an awesome job. But really, the emotional support that comes from this knife is the design and that lock. This is just mm, just a fidget fidget master. And I actually like these FRN handles. These gray anonymous FRN handles, I think are so cool. Now, of course, like the bug out and like so many other knives in of, of this kind of ilk, um, there are just a million options now. That starts off with the one FRN option. And now there's like a million different ways you can have your 80, 20.5. And however, however you do have it, it will, I guarantee you, it will be a great ESK for you, as well as full-time EDC. All right, next up, I would be remiss if I didn't have a knife in here, uh, and that, actually this knife in particular, but a knife in here that has the compression lock. So this is one of my favorites. This is a three, three and a quarter inch knife, one of the few that I will carry in my front right pocket. I mentioned that about the asymmetrical contact. Well, this is the other, this is one of the others uh, that is small, <clears throat> a little big knife that I will carry in my front 
front right pocket. So just before I continue, look if you if you look at that forward angle uh, on the Warren Cliff, that's a big part of it. Uh, if you line if we were to line up a Hinderer XM18 Warren Cliff right now, you would see that that has the very same tip angle. So for me, that's what makes the most useful Warren Cliff uh, because you get that pull cut utility cut tip, but you also have a very thrusty sax like um weapony tip let's say <laughs> rolls right off the tongue but this knife so this knife gives you the emotional support of knowing you have a um dyed in the wool or i should say um uh purpose designed tactical knife in your pocket self-defense knife in your pocket that just doubles as an incredible utility knife um we were talking about that g and g hawk utility knife that's so amazing well this uh, you know, this is not a G&G &G Hawk knife, but this is similar in that it is like a big utility knife, but it's also just a beautiful design. Uh, Michael Janich, uh, the man behind Marshall Blade Concepts, um, designed this. And the Ronin and the Yojimbo 1, the Yojimbo 2, uh, the Yojimbo, but to me, the Yojimbo 2, which is this, is his most perfect design. I have the 5x5 Combat Solutions pickpocket on there. I think it's called the pickpocket. It waves the knife out of your pocket, which is great on this knife. Uh, so it gives me the emotional support of knowing I have a, an incredible self-defense knife on me, uh, but also, and, and it, it looks good, of course, but also there's this. It's just so nice to open and close. That fidget factor is off the hook with the <clears throat> compression lock. Uh, by the way, all of these have to be good looking <laughs> to me. Uh, that's part of it. You know, they all have to be knives that have a visual appeal. Um, this next one it has a visual appeal, and it's honestly something I never would have sought out if the company didn't send it to me, but I can highly recommend it, and I really, really like it. This is the uh, Daily Carry Co. Mag Knife, and I have carried this in my bag. I have carried this in my pocket. I have left this on my desk for the pure fidget of it. But it also happens to be an excellent utility knife with a very good-looking Americanized Tonto blade. But first, let's take a look at that titanium handle. Nicely, um, what do you call it, snail trailed already. Uh, but this knife is sort of like a ballet song. The best way to deploy it, I have found, is you take the spine, aim it towards your palm, and you break it, break open the magnet like that. It's a magnet holding it shut. And then you just flip it like you would a ballet song. So it's a ballet song on a different axis. But it also has an M3, uh, I mean, a 20 CV blade, a really nice Americanized Tonto blade with a very crisp grind. I love the perfect little uh, sub point that it comes to. This has a Japanese name and I forget. Uh, but I love the perfect chisel of that forward um, portion. And then this straight, it's a very, very nicely ground blade. Uh, I have pressure tested this, meaning I've stabbed this into stumps and, uh, or, or, or live trees, but they can take it. Uh, and, the handle does do a little bit of this if you're using it hard, because I thought this might be a nice little tuck away um, uh, uh, you know, self-defense knife if I could get used to deploying it and and quickly came to realize, A, it would fall out of my hands if I actually had an adrenaline dump and I had to open up this knife, uh, it would be on the floor immediately, no doubt, or I would cut myself or both. Uh, so, so that thought went out the door pretty quickly, but uh, I, the reason I thought that is when it's open, it tucks away in the hand really nicely. It's a totally neutral handle, so you can hold it any which way. And that blade is just would be a, an incredible self-defense implement. So yes, you could use it uh, as such, but the handle does separate. It's only held together with magnets, and uh, that might be just enough to make you feel unsure if if you're able to actually bring it to bear. If it's like already open and in your hand, because uh, I don't know. I think you'd have to be a superhero to get this thing open in a in a quick hurry. All right, next up, one that would not be a problem in that situation is 
man, this is the only automatic uh, on the emotional support knife scale that I have. Uh, other out the fronts would do, but this one, due to its size and uh, just raw beauty, um, is is on this is on this right here, and 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 it is the Troodon, the original size, the three inch Troodon by Microtech. So you do get the emotional support of knowing you have a dagger in your pocket, one side being serrated, and uh, it's got that sharp noggin knocker. You know that this thing uh, is a great little tactical self-defense knife, last ditch sort of thing, and you can bring it to bear pretty quickly with that sliding uh, out the front motion. Um, this knife has a, a decent quietness to it, unlike my heretic, which makes a hell of a lot of noise when I, when I shake it. I don't know. That's starting to really bother me. I got to say, uh, but this one doesn't have that. And, uh, this one does have this though. Listen, it rings and it resonates for a long time. That used to bother me. Now it just, I just can't, couldn't care less anymore. Um, after almost ruining the knife by putting oil in there and stuff, uh, I did what they said, but I used the wrong material. Anyway, uh, you get the emotional support out of the fidget and knowing that you have a self-defense knife here. See, this this happened. Uh, and if you're not watching, the knife just did not come back in and it fell off its tracks. That does happen with this knife on occasion. So the emotional support that you gain from having a self-defense knife that is so fidgety in your pocket can sometimes backfire. Like if it comes off the tracks, then you're like all worried. Is my $300 emotional support knife okay? And that is counter uh, emotional support knife um, purpose, right? You, you, they're there for your feelings and your emotions. Uh, okay, third to last here. You know, what kind of a monster would I be if I didn't have an axis lock? And in this case, it's the able lock, the an enhanced bar, uh, the, the ambidextrous bar lock enhanced by Hogue. That's what able stands for. Uh, they just do a great version of the of the axis lock. Most people do at this point, even Sativian. Sativian, the very inexpensive Chinese knives. We gave one away here. Uh, just the other week, man, they, they have it nailed. They have the axis lock nailed. Uh, so, I mean, they've probably been ripping it off for years. <laughs> so they had a chance, but, or they had time to make it great. But able, the able lock from Hogue is my favorite. It just is awesome. And this little knife, uh, this is the Ritter Hogue mini RSK Mark one. Um, this was given to me by Doug Ritter, so it has uh, a lot of sentimental value. Uh, it's purple, which is beautiful, So, and it's in incredibly capable that, uh, knife that you can pull out in front of uh, the masses, the hoi polloi, without scaring them. Uh, that is at work and such. So this has a lot going, at, going for it, and uh, not the least of which is this awesome flipping action and uh and fidgetiness uh the fact that it's small means a lot too because i found that with the larger one the large uh rsk mark one i just didn't carry it but this one i do carry a lot uh especially after i put a bug out clip on it the bug out clip looks great on this knife i do not like hogue clips that's the one ding about hogue i do not like the clips but that one is great so uh, if you have a, uh, a, a Mark I, I'm sorry, an RSK, and you don't like the clip, you can always put a Benchmade clip on it. Okay, second up, or second to last, penultimate in the list here is one that is new to me, but I'm loving it. Uh, I got two knives from this company. Uh, this is from sharperedges.com, and they have, uh, this, they, they have this line, Elite Tactical. And uh, frankly, they're well, they're inexpensive and they're I'm, I'm glad they sent me these knives because I can actually endorse them now. Uh, I thought they looked cool, um, but I, I kind of expected them to be cheap. I'll be honest. I expected them not to be that good. And man, uh, they are that good. Uh, this knife is the Conqueror and it's a three point uh, I mean, a, a four point seven five inch 
uh, blade. I asked them to send me this one, they, uh, they and then they sent me a really good utility knife that's kind of an ugly duckling, but is awesome. Um, but we'll talk about that one at, at another time. This Conqueror is, you know, it fits the big tactical, um, uh, the big tactical need. This is uh, supplies the emotional support that your big brother behind you in a fight does. Um, but it's really nice. It feels good in hand. This is FRN, but it's molded with this sort of wing pattern that feels good in hand. It gives you uh, a couple of grips, like a, like a cold steel will. So you can be all the way back here, or you can come up here. And uh, so you have about two options, I guess. But still very nice that you can use the length of that handle. Um, the fidget factor is insane. Uh, this lock um, is not an axis lock. It looks like it is, but it's not. When you lift up on this, there is a bar inside that, that gets, there's a stop pin that, ow, shit, excuse me. There's a stop pin that fits into the notch on the back of the blade. And uh, when you lift it up, a yoke comes up. Actually, it's most like a scorpion lock in there. It's most like a scorpion lock where you have a little uh, a little notch in the blade and then a uh, lock uh, pin drops in there. That's what, That's what's going on inside. And then this thing here is what allows you to lift that mechanism up and pull that little yoke up and remove the stop pin from the notch on the back of the blade. So what does that result in? It results in incredible fidget factor with a big knife. And the cool thing is, is it's not loud. It clacks, it's got a plastic clack. It doesn't have a metallic sounding clack to it. Uh, the stop pin is metal, I have confirmed that. So it's not plastic on metal, but it's got a really great fidget easy to do one-handed. I, I always find the um, bar locks like the axis. I need both fingers and that's fine. I'm fine with that. But this one is very definitely a one-handed fidgeter. Um, and then, so as an ESK, this is probably the newest one uh, in this list. I get the emotional support of knowing I have a big knife, a big folder. And this, this is strong. I've spine whacked this just to try. I, I was very kind of suspicious of this lock. Uh, at first, but I am no longer. Uh, so I have the emotional support of knowing I have a big, burly knife on me, but it's fun as hell to open and close. Um, and it's D2 blade steel. It's good to go. Oh, wait, no, this is 8CR13 MOV. The other one is D2. Um, so good to go knife to throw in the in the bag. All right, last in the list is, this is one that is my favorite dog walking knife. It's my favorite going... Uh, in in my urban uh, uh, urban outback, uh, it's my favorite uh, knife that I bring along for self protection. I'm I'm talking dogs, I'm talking people, I'm talking you know whatever whatever I might need to unzip. Uh, that's what I carry this for. So this this knife gives me the emotional support of knowing I got my bases covered for self protection, and that is the Cold Steel Voyager XL Vaquero. Now, if I needed this and finally, like, uh, accidentally found myself lost in a jungle, this would be an outstanding knife for that kind of utility as well. But this is a signature series uh, Lynn Thompson knife. I have a couple of those signature series knives, and uh, but this is my favorite and most used of all of them. It's on the uh, it's the Cold Steel Voyager XL platform. It is, but it's. Unlike the usual ones, it has the green FRN. I think they're starting now to bring color into their knives, finally. Uh, but it's got the green FRN and that Yatagan blade. Look at that thing. Uh, sometimes looking at the knife upside down really shows you how dramatic that sweep is. And then, of course, as Lynn Thompson does, uh, he puts the serrations on this already wickedly deadly blade. Uh, Yadagan is the is a short sword out of Turkey, um, and it has that recurve, and the point is lower than the knuckles, but still kind of uh, comes up to the center line. So you've got two, you've got a, a belly coming and going, and then you have that deep recurve here. So just a wicked, wicked blade. I have it with the uh, snaggletooth MF on there, so it can 
I can pull it out of my pocket and wave it open and have it ready to go. I don't like the way uh, the Snaggletooth disrupts the lines of this knife in particular, but this isn't about looks. This is about uh, having this thing on me. And I mentioned way early on that a uh, backlock can be fidgety, and I say that Cold Steel um, triad locks are fidgety because they set them up for one-handed close so that if you have your finger up in the front of that finger well, it's the ricasso is gonna is how it's gonna stop and then you can so you can do this with pretty much all cold steel triad lock knives they, they have them set up for that so you can fidget it and you can save a life or two with this thing um that is the voyager xl signature with lynn thompson's second grade teacher signature on it i absolutely love it all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming on this journey with me through my emotions and the emotional support knife. What is your emotional support knife? Do you buy into the concept or are you one of these people who takes your nervous dog on the flight just for your own good? And it, the dog be damned and the rest of the people around you be damned. Are you one of those people? Let me know. Or are you just someone who's satisfied with an emotional support knife, as we all should be. All right, join us on Sunday for a great interview, and then uh, Thursday night for Thursday Night Knives, right here at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, also on YouTube and Twitch, or you can download us to your favorite podcast app as listed uh, right next to my face. Uh, so I think that's about it for this week. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying the caffeine is finally kicking in. And until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.